From phys.org on October 3rd, 2024, comes this headline. Study. Wildfires will make the land absorb much less carbon, even if warming is kept below 1.5 degrees C. Apparently, the best kept secret in climate science, the aerosol masking effect, is being replaced by the notion that Earth is beyond 1.5 C. I would go a step further in pointing out that Earth is beyond 2 C. This is nothing new to regular followers of this channel. It is new to people who receive and believe information from corporate media outlets and government officials. That such people still exist in a world on fire is surprising to me. The Fizz.org article begins with this paragraph, quote, One of the aims of the Paris Agreement was to pursue efforts to keep global warming below 1.5 degrees C, but even this ambitious target would not stop the land's ability to absorb carbon weakening as wildfires become fiercer and more frequent, according to UK and Brazilian scientists. The c climate simulations used to determine the 1.5 degrees C Paris target lacked information about fire and vegetation, they say, so they ran simulations that included that data." End quote. The short article at phys.org continues, quote, they found the global warming level at which fire began to impact the land's ability to absorb carbon was 1.07 degrees C above pre-industrial levels, and that fire is already playing a major role in hampering that ability. The findings are published in the journal Nature Geoscience. They estimate that including fire reduces our remaining carbon budget by 5%, or about 25 gigatons of CO2, if we want to limit warming to 1.5 degrees C, or by 5%, or 64 gigatons of CO2, to stay below 2 degrees C. Limiting warming to 1.5 degrees C is still essential for avoiding the worst of climate change, they say, but in many cases we are already seeing significant disruption to Earth's ecosystems. End quote. That final phrase is particularly telling. Quote, in many cases, we are already seeing significant disruption to Earth's ecosystems. End quote. Mega droughts, recurrent 100-year floods, record-setting wildfires, and the designed-to-fail IPCC reporting abrupt, irreversible climate change are sufficient to convince any rational person that quote, we are already seeing significant disruption to Earth's ecosystems. End quote. I now turn to the peer-reviewed open access paper in Nature Geoscience. Published on October 3rd, 2024, the paper is titled, Fire Weakens Land Carbon Sinks Before 1.5 Degrees C. Written by 10 scholars, the abstract contains this information, quote, To avoid the worst impacts of climate change, the Paris Agreement committed countries to pursue efforts to limit global warming to 1.5 degrees C by urgently reducing greenhouse gas emissions. However, the Paris temperature ambitions and remaining carbon budgets mostly use models that lack feedback among fire, vegetation, and carbon, which are essential for understanding the future resilience of ecosystems. Here we use a coupled fire vegetation model to explore regional impacts and feedbacks across global warming levels. We address whether the 1.5 degrees C goal is consistent with avoiding significant ecosystem changes when considering shifts in fire regimes. We find that the global warming level at which fire began to impact global carbon storage significantly was 1.07 degrees C above pre-industrial levels, and conclude that fire is already playing a major role in decreasing the effectiveness of land carbon sinks. We estimate that considering fire reduces the remaining carbon budget by 25 gigatons CO2, about 5%, for limiting temperature rise to 1.5 degrees C and 64 gigatons CO2, about 5%, for 2.0 degrees C compared to previous estimates, whereas limiting warming to 1.5 degrees C is still essential for avoiding the worst impacts of climate change. In many cases, we are already reaching the point of significant change in ecosystems rich in carbon and biodiversity." End quote. Oh my! Quote, limiting warming to 1.5 degrees C is still essential for avoiding the worst impacts of climate change, end quote. That's inconvenient, considering governments of the world caught up with Andrew Glickson in concluding we passed the 2C Rubicon a year ago. The main section of the peer-reviewed paper cites considerable peer-reviewed evidence. Quote, as accumulated CO2 emissions increase and the climate continues to warm, we will probably face more ecosystem impacts worldwide. 
Higher global temperatures and changing rainfall patterns will probably lead to changes in fire regimes and their impacts on ecosystems. At 1.26 degrees C of warming above pre-industrial levels, we already see changes in the intensity and frequency of extreme fire events, many of which have become more likely due to climate change and some almost impossible without current levels of warming. End quote. Again, oh my, Earth is, quote, at 1.26 degrees C of warming above pre-industrial levels. We already see changes in the intensity and frequency of extreme weather events, many of which have become more likely due to climate change and some almost impossible without current levels of warming, end quote. Perhaps that's because Earth is not, quote, at 1.26 degree C of warming above pre-industrial levels, end quote. Rather, Earth is at more than 2C above the 1750 baseline, as those of us paying attention have known for quite a long time. Never mind that the 2C Rubicon never made sense. Never mind that the advisory group on greenhouse gases concluded that 1C was dangerously likely to cause self-reinforcing feedback loops. Never mind that climate science writer and speaker David Spratt concluded that we triggered self-reinforcing feedback loops at 0.5C above the 1750 baseline. Never mind that the IPCC concluded that climate change was abrupt and irreversible more than five years ago. Never mind that I'm repeating myself over and over again. The main section of the peer-reviewed paper continues, again citing abundant peer-reviewed evidence. Quote, Fire regime and biome shifts are also occurring across the world's ecosystems due to climate change, and models project increased transformation as warming increases. Transition can result from climate, land use, and fire interactions, such as shifting tropical forest ecosystems to seasonal forests or savannas. Fire substantially impacts ecosystems and carbon stores through vegetation mortality, hydrolo hydrological cycle changes, and emissions of greenhouse gases, aerosols, and aerosol precursors. Fires may also determine alternate stable states of ecosystems within similar climates, and spatial and temporal changes in fire regimes may alter the outcome when considering the future resilience of ecosystems. End quote. You had to know this was on the way. Quote, the further we limit emissions and global temperature rise, the more we can limit the worst impacts of climate change. Studies using fire weather show an increased fire risk for temperatures at and beyond 1.5 degrees C. However, no studies have yet explored the impact on land carbon sinks of including changes in fire feedbacks to understand if 1.5 degrees C is consistent with avoiding significant ecosystem changes, end quote. That's our scientific goal, to quote, understand if 1.5 degrees C is consistent with avoiding significant ecosystem changes, end quote. Perhaps we can alter our scientific goal to match reality instead. Am I asking too much? <laughs> 